All right, welcome to Going for Depth, the, de um, the Depth and Complexity Framework. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so my name is Holly Kirk and I am our advanced learner and SALTA specialist. And what I'm going to share today in today's Bite Size PD is a strategy um, that can be used as a differentiation tool but also has many different applications. Um, we're just gonna kind of focus in on a couple of them, but really this uh, PD should be part of a much longer series. So today's intention is just to kind of see what the depth and complexity framework is and how you could use it as a differentiation tool. And then we're gonna look at some examples of learning intentions, um, some for wonders, some just general ed, and looking at how those could be um, deepened and how more complexity could be added by utilizing this framework. So um, why the framework? So the framework, the depth and complexity framework, let me move this out of the way, um, came out of a study that was done at USC's Rosier School, which is, um, and it was done way back in the 80s but they interviewed all of these different experts in their different domains. And what they found was that what experts were able to do in their domains required a lot of these different lenses in order to be an expert. And just like where we sometimes oversimplify concepts, if you ask an expert about something, um, usually their answer is something along the lines of this depends. So out of that study came the depth and complexity framework, and it's really designed to help create expert learners by giving them those tools to think about content as an expert would. They're also really helpful in creating learning experiences that are low floor and high ceiling so that there's an easy entry point for all of your students, um, maybe some that don't have that background knowledge, and then also scales up and has more of an open um, end, that high ceiling for students that are um, ready to go deeper with the content. So um, this is that study I was telling you about, and um, it was done by Sandra Kaplan and Betty Gold. Usually we just hear about Kaplan, um, but there was another person that also helped with it. And they're really just visual cues. If you think of them even as emojis, they're cues to prompt expert thinking. So these cues then help in increase depth and complexity in a learning experience. And I just wanted to briefly differentiate between depth and complexity before we went into the, the framework itself. So when we talk about depth, we're thinking about how can knowledge be used and why is it used? There's still open-ended problems. They can be debatable questions, but we're really taking the content and just going deeper and deeper and deeper with it. Complexity is a little harder to um to define because really complexity has to do with are you making connections across um, content areas over time between content areas and they can be layered factors that are considered simultaneously so like where you can have both yes and no and both can be true at the same time um, that would be something that would be more complex so these um, this framework has those visual cues to then deepen learning but also make learning more complex and increase those co connections. So I wanted to share just this quick video. What was going on? Okay, um, here we go. Um, that kind of introduces the framework itself. It's 11 different prompts, and its purpose is to move our students from thinking like beginners to thinking more like experts, not just knowing more, but thinking differently. Consider your own career as a teacher. I'm sure you've heard a non-educator say something like, to fix education, all we need to do is, and then list some unhelpful idea that anyone with even one day of teaching experience would know is impossible. As an experienced teacher, you understand your field differently than an outsider would. Just as an experienced firefighter or cardiologist or janitor or basketball player understands their field differently than an outsider. So let's look at how depth and complexity fits in with an expert educator's experience. There are 11 prompts of depth and complexity, and we're going to hit them all here in a minute or two. Imagine you're at a staff meeting and your boss starts using some acronyms and education lingo. This is language of the discipline, words that experts understand, but a beginner would be baffled by. She's explaining a new district initiative. 
There's a discussion about how this initiative intersects with neuroscience and a need for physical movement. This is going across the disciplines. Our field is intertwined with other experts' fields. But you recognize that this initiative is very different from the initiative from a few years ago. You're noting how your field is changing over time. A beginner wouldn't have this context, but you spot it right away. You also note some dilemmas that this initiative will pose. These are ethical issues. What new problems will this idea lead to? How do the pros and cons balance out? You might even note that this isn't the first time your bosses have switched directions after a few years. In fact, you think this has become a pattern, an idea that repeats over and over within a field. You also spot that this initiative might violate some union rules, but because you know the hierarchy, that's also a rule, you won't say anything right now. You think about how kids and parents will view this initiative differently, and you might also note how teachers will think about it differently from administrators. In this way, you're thinking with multiple perspectives. As you consider the small facts about this initiative, these are the details, you consider whether or not it matches your purpose or big idea for even being a teacher. You wonder whether the current trend is headed in a positive or negative direction. You're left with more questions than you started with about how this will all work out. And these are your unanswered questions. So those are the 11 prompts of depth and complexity. I think of them as different lenses to help you focus on different parts of an idea. Each lens you put on a camera reveals new things about the subject that you're photographing. The prompts of depth and complexity will do the same. They'll reveal new things about the content that your students are studying. You probably use these lenses all the time in your own thinking without even realizing it. And that's because these prompts of depth and complexity came out of interviews with experts across many different fields. Sandra Kaplan and Betty Gould back in the 1990s wanted to understand how experts think differently than beginners about their area of expertise. And through many interviews, they arrived at these 11 tools as common ideas they saw across various fields. So a doctor is going to use language of their discipline and consider the ethical issues or how their field has changed over time. A basketball player is going to use language of their discipline. They're going to consider the rules and the ethics and how their sport has changed over time. And we can bring these to any subject that we're teaching in school. All of these are different lenses we can use to go deeper into our own subject matter and move our students closer to an expert's way of thinking. And before we go, these graphical icons you've seen simply serve as a visual shortcut, a cue that students should be thinking in a certain way. Just like each of these symbols made you think of certain jobs, these symbols will make students think using one of the 11 lenses. You'll see how it works in upcoming videos. Now, there are lots of variations on these icons. The way they look isn't the point. It's that they trigger a certain way of thinking. I like to use emojis since they're so darn convenient and fun. But in the old days, I just sketched them by hand on my overhead projector. And by the way, your kids should be using these icons as they get familiar with depth and complexity. While you're certainly going to use these, they're really students' tools that they can use to go deeper into content. So we're going to take a break here so that you can browse this PDF with definitions and sample questions using each prompt. And then in the following videos, we'll go deeper into the prompts of depth and complexity. So if you are would like to see more of those videos, um, that is done by Ian Bird, and he I, I've linked him at the end of this presentation, um, but he has a website called birdseed.tv. His last name's Bird, like B-Y-R-D, um, and you can find more information there. Um, all right, so that's kind of an overview on all of the different prompts. Um, here's another kind of piece of, these are the initial depth and complexity prompts. They've since been expanded. So there are more um, than are just available here, but this is your core um, prompts. And Dr. Sandra Kaplan, I was able to attend one of her professional learning um, seminars this summer. And she said this, which I really loved, um, that differentiation isn't the dessert at the end of the lesson. It's the right that students have to see content in different ways throughout their learning process. So sometimes I think when teachers think about differentiation, we're thinking about what do we do at the end of the lesson for the kids that have it, for the kids that still need to learn it. But differentiation should really occur at all stages of the learning process. Um, and we're, there are three different core categories of differentiation. Um, we've got content, process, and product. When we're looking at learning objectives, like we will in just a moment, we are differentiating content. And these tools, um, the depth and complexity framework, are great tools to be able to differentiate 
up for your learners that are ready um, to go deeper with content, but there's also creating that access point for students that maybe don't have the background knowledge. So let's look at some examples. Let's say we have a learning intention that says, I can compare and contrast Lincoln and Washington's presidencies. That's just a, a standard learning intention. But when we add in a couple of the depth and complexity icons, we're able to come up with a much richer question um, that really prompts student thinking. And you can see how these, prompt, how these learning intentions shift. So if we changed it by adding in the ethics icon, um, and we put in, I can compare and contrast the ethical dilemmas that Lincoln and Washington faced during their presidencies. Now we have an entirely different learning experience and different target, and we're going deeper in one of those categories. Or if we looked at multiple perspectives, we could even flip it and say, what would Washington think about Lincoln? And you can see how that's a much um, more complex question than the original learning intention. So the two that I just use, these are quick prompts um, for added depth and complexity, the, the lenses of multiple perspectives, um, just flipping Lincoln and Washington, what would X think about Y is one way to look at perspectives. And another one that you can use in just any content area, especially in math, I think this comes pretty naturally in math, is look when you're looking at patterns, not just finding a solution, but can you find other ways of doing it? And how do your, um, your pathways to a solution compare and contrast with another person in the classroom? So you can see how these just are quick ways to differentiate up um, without you having to really create a whole new resource for those students. Um, let's look at another couple examples. So this would be if we had in second grade, we've got our learning standard of recounting stories, including fables and folk tales from diverse cultures, and then determining their central message, lesson, or moral. So it's a big overarching standard. What we're really asking kids to do when we break that down is to retell or summarize, which would be recount, and the content that they're trying to retell or summarize would be um, comes from that resource of a fable or a folk tale, and they're determining theme, they're looking at lessons and morals, they're looking at central messages, and then the products can vary depending on your learning experience or the activity that you create. But what if we add a depth and complexity icon here of multiple perspectives, and we shifted it, or even details, and we shifted it to retell the fable from a different character's perspective changing key details of the story, but keeping the moral the same. So we're still working within that standard, but by adding those two different icons, we're able to create a deeper um, learning experience. And you can see how much more rigorous that um, learning intention or learning target would be. Um, I've got another example from fifth grade. This comes from the first unit of wonders. So in the respond to reading prompt, they ask, how did Roosevelt's feelings about nature drive his decisions and actions? Um, so really, we're proving with evidence. What are we examining? Character feeling, character motivation. Camping with the president is the story from the um, anchor text. And then in the respond to reading, we're usually looking at a product of writing. But if we add the ethics icon, how does this change? Well, it could be something along the lines of what are some ethical implications of Roosevelt's visit to Yosemite? So this is much more open-ended. Um, it's much more open to interpretation. Pulling evidence to defend your position. Um, should nature be explored and developed for tourism? So this is a great place to get into controversies about whether um, national parks are good for the environment or not. Um, so this would be a, a much richer way to examine the same text, but with an ethical lens. We could also look at trends over time. So how did Roosevelt's feelings about nature impact his environmental policies over time? Because a lot of the story centers on his feelings about nature, did his actions match up to his feelings? Um, and long-term, was his presidency beneficial in terms of protecting environmental um, environmental policies or environmental areas, um, environmental areas, environment, or was it detrimental? And that then gets into trends and it gets into a little bit more research and thinking more deeply about his presidency. And then finally, you could add some unanswered questions. So at the end of the trip in the story, he, quote, wanted to do some forest good once he returned to Washington. So along the same lines of the overtime um, prompt, did he actually um, do some forest good? So that is just a really quick overview of the depth and complexity framework. Um, if you're interested in learning more, I have these resources linked for you. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you.